I undervolted my RTX 3080 and RTX 3060 Ti. The efficiency gains were very impressive, and I highly urge any RTX 3000 owners to do the same. Let's discuss why in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. This is going to be a very interesting video because we're going to be taking a look at some data and benchmark results that include an undervolted RTX 3080 and RTX 3060 Ti. Now, ever since we started to hear about these RTX 3000 series graphics cards based on Ampere, one of the big rumors we were hearing was how power hungry these next gen GPUs were going to be. And I even said way back then that I feel like these new Nvidia graphics cards are probably going to be given the radio on treatment, where instead of users trying to push the cards to the max, they're going to be undervolting them to get their GPUs to sit nicely in that sweet spot of the performance per watt curve. And when we finally saw the cards come out, yeah, they were listed with some high TDP figures when compared to the previous gen, and Nvidia had listed high wattage power supply requirements, where for a GPU like the RTX 3080, it's recommended that you use at least a 750 watt power supply. Along with that, we even saw AIB cards come out with beefier coolers and much higher power limits around 450 watt watts, which is just insane when you think about it, but these GPUs will happily use up that much power if given the opportunity, though unfortunately it doesn't drastically improve performance a whole lot, so I don't see a whole lot of benefit there unless you're an extreme overclocker. When I did my review for the MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio, I noticed that with the card at stock, the GPU consumed around 337 watts on average, and peaked around 342 watts. And then when overclocked, the card's average power consumption didn't actually increase all that much since it was hitting its maximum. 350 watt power limit. Meanwhile, performance aside from synthetic benchmarks was barely impacted at all, in games we were looking at margin of error stuff. Performance you'd barely be able to notice, yet you'd have to deal with the extra power usage, extra heat the card puts out, and with it the extra bit of noise from the cooler. With the RTX 3060 Ti power consumption barely changed when we overclocked that GPU because at stock it was already running so close to its power limit, but we did notice a larger performance impact when we compared it to the RTX 3080. However, if you recently saw my video where I showcased 7 gaming benchmarks with the stock and overclocked configurations directly side by side, you'd have also noticed that performance wasn't that much higher and it wouldn't be all that noticeable either. Along with that, the fact that we're seeing an X60 class card consume this much power was in my opinion quite distasteful, where the RTX 3060 Ti on average consumed around 241 watts of power. Do keep in mind though that power consumption was tested with Time Spy Extreme's second graphics benchmark on loop for about an hour, so this is an extreme case to be fair and under a gaming load in most instances power consumption wouldn't be as high but still with the 200 watt tdp and this card having a power limit of 250 watts this is definitely on the higher side of what we had grown accustomed to for a mid-range gpu i mean back in 2016 when nvidia released the gtx 1060 that card had a tdp of 120 watts well below that of the rtx 3060 ti but like i said in my review it's clear power efficiency wasn't the focus for the rtx 30 series and do note it wasn't that far away from the previous generation RTX 2080 Super. Both of these GPUs, whether it's the high-end segment or mid-range, definitely running fairly power-hungry for their target segments. So after seeing these results, I thought, you know what, we can probably do better than this. And so I set out to undervolt these two graphic cards to see just how much power we could save without sacrificing too much performance. The results that I got were quite fascinating to see, and I wanted to show them to you guys because after seeing them, I was convinced that undervolting is the way to go if you have an RTX 3000 graphics card. Before we get into the results, I just want to do a quick rundown of the test system specs. For the CPU, we've got an AMD Ryzen 7 3800 XT cooled by a Corsair H115i Pro XT 280mm all-in-one liquid cooler. For the RAM, we've got 16GB of GSCO Trident Z memory running at 3600MHz with CL15 timings. The motherboard is an MSI MEG X570 Unify. For our storage device, we've got a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe SSD. Powering the entire system is an EVGA G3 1000W 80 plus gold power supply. If you're interested in full system specs, check the video description down below. Also, if you guys want to see my full on in-depth reviews for both of these graphics cards, links for those will be also there as well. All right, so undervolting these GPUs was fairly straightforward and only took me a few minutes to set up using MSI Afterburner. In MSI Afterburner, the voltage frequency curve editor was used and for both the GPUs, I targeted a voltage of 850 millivolts with the frequency set at around 1850 megahertz 
Hertz, which was close to the advertised stock specification for both the RTX 3080 and 3060 Ti Gaming X Trio models. The memory was also left at stock. Now, just like with overclocking, you also have to validate the stability of your undervolt by running a few stress tests to ensure that the GPU can work correctly under load and you don't encounter any crashes while gaming. Thankfully, my undervolt settings worked on both of these GPUs and I hadn't encountered any stability problems or crashes. Also, do keep in mind, just like with overclocking, Undervolting results can vary depending on the quality of your chip, so your mileage may vary. After I had validated the undervolt settings were stable, then I decided to do some benchmark tests to see how much performance had been impacted. Power consumption and temps will be shown after. We'll first take a look at Time Spy Extreme, which is a fairly heavy GPU synthetic benchmark at 4K and uses DirectX 12. At stock, the 3080 got a score of 9044, and when undervolted, we saw a drop of just 77 points for the graphics score. That's a performance drop, which is less than a percent. Also, looking at the score averages on 3 Mark's own results database, my score was still a bit higher than the average, so I was happy to see that. As for the RTX 3060 Ti, the score does decrease by a larger margin, where it goes from 6,117 stock to 5,828 for the undervolt. Here, we're looking at a drop of around 5%, which still isn't too bad. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at some actual games. Please note, all the games were tested at a resolution of 2560 by 1440 with the ultra or very high preset. Also, we're only going to be taking a look at 5 games. As you'll see, we don't need to see a plethora of benchmarks to get a clear picture of just how much performance is impacted, but if you are looking for a variety of gaming benchmarks, then check out my day one review. Now starting us off is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here we're seeing some really good performance figures from these undervolted GPUs. The 3080 sees a drop of around 5% for the average, and the 3060 Ti sees a similar drop in performance. These are performance impacts you really wouldn't notice at all. Next up, we have Forza Horizon 4, one of my favorite open world racing titles. Here the RTX 3080 barely loses performance when undervolted vaulted compared to its stock configuration, where we go from 165 FPS average to 160, a mere 5 FPS loss, and when your average frame rate attained is already so high, it will not be noticeable in the slightest. As for the RTX 3060 Ti, it does see a larger performance drop, 10 FPS for the average, but its performance can still be considered quite good. Horizon Zero Dawn is up next, and again, the performance drops we're seeing here aren't anything too significant. Both the RTX 3080 and 3060 Ti see the same 5.6% drop in performance, again, nothing that the user will notice. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it's the same thing. The performance drops on both of these GPUs can be considered negligible. Though, this is a pretty demanding title and performance wasn't anything spectacular to begin with. The last game we'll take a look at, even though I'm sure you guys get the idea by now, is Red Dead Redemption 2. The 3080 loses 5 FPS for the average and the 3060 Ti sees a drop of 4 FPS in regards to the averages. Did I say you guys wouldn't notice these drops? Seriously, just wait until you see the significant power savings, it'll be totally worth it. Alright, so for the 5 game averages, we're seeing a 5% drop in regards to the average frame rate for the RTX 3080 and for the RTX 3060 Ti, the drop is just slightly higher at 6%. And even for the 1% low figures, the margins aren't that big. So with these GPUs undervolted, there is a performance loss, but not in any meaningful way. With all these titles we just saw, you'd be hard pressed to notice the difference in regards to performance or smoothness. Though the biggest question on everyone's mind will be, is it worth it to even go through the hassle of undervolting? Are you even saving a lot of power? And the answer to that question is definitely. With our Time Spy Extreme stress test, our RTX 3080 dropped 49 watts when it came to the average power consumption and 29 watts for the peak power figure. That's a drop of 15 and 8% respectively. For the RTX 3060 Ti, we actually do see a larger drop in regards to the average power consumption, a drop of 28% where it went from a whopping 241 watts to just 174 watts and peaked at 185 watts. And now the RTX 3060 Ti is looking a bit more appropriate when it comes to power usage for its target segment. Also guys, do keep in mind that this data was logged during Time Spy Extreme's second graphics test, so it's already quite heavy on the GPU and is under constant use 100% of the time, so this is the worst case scenario for these graphics cards, whereas for a game you'll see considerably lower power figures, and I'll actually show you guys a preview of some side-by-side -side gameplay I recorded, but before that, let's just quickly take a look at temps. Now the other major benefit from undervolting GPUs will be lower operating temperatures. The RTX 3080 dropped its average temps by 8 degrees 
degrees Celsius, and the RTX 3060 Ti saw its temps come down to 57 degrees Celsius, down from 65. That's great, and I was quite happy to see that, as with lower temps, you'll have to deal with less noise as the GPU fans won't have to spin as fast. In fact, for the RTX 3060 Ti, they were barely even coming on, and this is because the cooler was already somewhat overkill for that card. In terms of its design, it was very close to the RTX 3080 minus one copper heat pipe, so this results in having to deal with less heat, lower noise, and who wouldn't love to have a quieter system? This is especially helpful for people who might be using these components in a small form factor build, a mini ITX setup, where thermals can be an issue since you don't have a whole lot of airflow in those small cases. And as someone who will eventually be using the RTX 3080 and a Q500L, which is notorious for poor thermals, I will definitely have to utilize my undervolt. Okay, so circling back to power usage, let's take a quick look at Gears 5's benchmark running on the RTX 3060 Ti. On the left is the stock configuration, and on the right is the undervolt. Here, you'll see a dramatic difference when it comes to GPU power usage, where on average, we're looking at a reduction of around 80 to 90 watts. Meanwhile, in terms of a performance hit, we're seeing a loss of around 4 to 5 frames per second. By the way, I will also be making a couple follow-up videos showcasing more gaming benchmarks like this for both the 3080 and 3060 Ti, so be on the lookout for that. In my opinion, this is a great trade-off. I'll sacrifice that negligible performance any day if it means saving that much power and also seeing considerably lower temps. This also just goes to show just how far Nvidia decided to push the silicon to its limits to get out every last bit of performance from these GPUs, where just spending a couple minutes in Afterburner reduced power drastically with a very minor hit to the actual performance. Another reason why this is such a big deal and why I recommend undervolting is because of I've gotten a lot of comments on my reviews and build guides I posted from people saying, hey, I've got a 650 watt power supply or I've got a 500 watt power supply. Do you think I can get by? And if you weren't undervolting, then I'd say stick with what Nvidia is recommending. However, after undervolting and seeing the actual power usage during gaming, you can probably get by with a power supply that is rated for 100 watts less than what Nvidia specifies, maybe even 150 watts, but, might, but that might be a little bit pushing it. And of course, it also depends on a whole bunch of other factors like what kind of CPU you you're using, is that CPU overclocked, etc. However, this also doesn't excuse you from using a total garbage tier power supply. I still recommend using a good quality power supply from a known and reputable brand like Seasonic, Corsair, or EVGA. So there you guys have it. After seeing these results, I highly urge anyone with a 3000 series GPU to try and undervolt their card. It only takes a few minutes, the performance hit is very minimal, but the benefits of much lower power usage, lower temps, lower noise are all an excellent trade-off. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.